sky. In some cases, getting contacts, signers, receivers for your sign request from the standard data sources might not be possible. You have a complex setup. You need more logic to select your data so, uh, to select your data sources or your signers. In that case, you can now just create a flow and implement your own logic to set up your signers and receivers. In this flow, uh, it's an auto-launched flow, as you can see. So in this flow, I'm actually going to get the contact uh, as an input variable. I have the, the record ID and the sign request ID. Those input variables uh, you have to create yourself and they have to have the exact name as uh, shown here. Uh, it will be on the Academy, all the information on the naming. And then, of course, they have to be available for inputs. Same with the uh, sign request ID. Maybe depending on the sign request ID, you also want to build in some logic or get that sign request ID. And it is perfectly possible. Now, I get some contacts via my uh, record ID, as you can see here, and I want to put all of these contacts now as a signer. So the only thing that I have to do is create a loop, go through all the signers and do an assignment in a new uh, stakeholder variable. And how do I uh, add these assigners, uh, assigners there or these signers there? That is done via a formula. Let's go into detail. First of all, we have our stakeholders vari uh, variable, yeah? So that's already available for output. It has to be called stakeholders and it has to be a list. So this uh, has to be checked. Um, when that is done, you have to assign texts. So as you can see, it's of type text uh, because Salesforce does not allow to have complex data structures as output variables. So it has to be a text here. And uh, what I put there as text is actually a concatenation of a bunch of information. As you can see here, it starts with what type of uh, stakeholder am I? It's, this is the signer, then it has a pipe. And after the pipe, you have a uh, dot uh, semicolon separated all the uh, signing methods that you want to use. If you just say, okay, I only want to have the scribble, then you can just remove these two over here. Uh, uh, if you say, well, I also want to allow, for instance, uh, uploads of an image, then you just have to put upload here as well. So you can just define the ones that you want here. Then again, it needs a pipe. Uh, because I'm going to add the stakeholder ID, if I'm going to add the first name of my stakeholder, the last name of my stakeholder, and the email address. And last but not least, as an optional item, you can also add the locale. So in this case, it's hard-coded, but it can come from the, uh, the logic that you have built from a formula, field from a, a variable, or of course, directly from your stakeholder. Maybe you have a locale set up on your contact. Okay, so this is the formula. You will find it on the academy, so you can just copy paste it from there and reuse it. Uh, but that's the structure that we would need for the signers. Now, there's also a receiver that I want to set. In this case, my receiver um, is set at the end. And as you can see, it's also set to the stakeholders list. And it's also fed by a formula. So let's take a look at the formula for the receiver. As you would expect, it is now set as a receiver, so not as a signer anymore. These two, ver these two items here are not uh, uh, used because this is a receiver. They don't have to sign it, but just to keep the same structure, uh, something is there, but you can just leave it empty if you don't want to put there anything there. Then we need to concatenate it with the user ID, the first name, the last name, the email address, the uh, locale, and then, of course, when do you want to receive uh, um, a notification that something has happened with the sign request. In this case, you can do that when it's created, when it's signed, or when it's completed. So completed means it has reached an end stage, and that end stage can be finished, everybody signed, or it can be rejected. Somebody, or it can be rejected, um, also expired, it is an end state. So any end state you would get a notification that it's expired, that it's rejected, that it's uh, finished. Uh, so these are the ones that are possible to, uh, to set. Okay, so that's my formulas. So the only thing I now did is add all of these uh, signers um, as an assignment to the uh, stakeholder list. So I, I use the add operator everywhere, so I can add them. And that's, uh, and that's it at the end of my uh, 
uh, of my flow here. I obviously have a bunch of contacts, a bunch of stakeholders that I've added uh, to my list, and that's the list I'm going to return back into Sign Butler. So, how does Sign Butler now know to use this um, flow that you have created? Well, on the Sign Request template, you can just check Use Flow for Signer. So now the system will know that it doesn't have to use any of the data sources. So actually the data sources can just be empty now. So no data sources are required. And then if I go to the next page, I can actually select a flow. So the system will present you all the flows that are, uh, uh, yeah, that can be used. And of course, yeah, this is the one get stakeholder by flow. That's the one I have to use. Okay. Click next. And then I'm going to submit. So my sign request template gets saved. At the moment, we are going to look, our sign button is going to look what are the signers, what are the receivers. At that moment, they will see that there is a flow set. At that moment, it will run that flow and get the list of uh, receivers and signers directly uh, to use. So it will then get all of the receivers and signers via the stakeholder variable, which is a collection, and then say, okay, I'm going to add every signer in the order that it was added to the stakeholder collection uh, and every receiver in the order that it was added to the stakeholder, uh, stakeholder collection a variable to the uh, list of signers. That's how it will uh, process. And this way you can build your own custom logic to define your signers. You can all build your own custom logic to fetch signers from any of your objects. Uh, they don't have to be contacts, they don't have to be leads, they don't have to be users, they can be, uh, but they just need a first name, a last name, and an email address. Obviously, using contacts and leads and users is uh, the best option to move forward because these are the standard objects that Salesforce creates to store that kind of information.